I really wanted to share this video with you because it covers the use of fried oil and the massive detrimental effects that it has on the digestive system. And it feeds into all of the um, area of study that I do around healing the gut. And so what I want to show is this study that's just come out at the end of August 2019 and how um, cooking oils that have been uh, used for fried food have such a massive detrimental impact on the exact area that we're healing when we're following the Patterson program. So this article um, is called The Thermally Processed Oil Exaggerates Col Colonic Inflammation and Colitis Associated Colon Tumorigenesis in Mice. And really what I want to draw upon here is just how detrimental these industrial cooking oils, in this case, uh, canola oil and fried foods that you would find at just your local cafe, your local restaurant, and what detrimental impact that can have on your health, uh, whether it be a, a veg, even a vegetable stir fry at your Thai restaurant or um, having a fried veggie burger at your local cafe. This is going to have terrible impact uh, on your digestive health. And I've seen months of recovery required from eating such foods. And why is it just so bad? Um, well, in this study, what they did is they um, fed mice um, just fried food uh, and tried to represent the amount of sort of fried food that um, might be found in the frequency of a human diet based on um, the popular nurses study that was done many years ago, studying sort of uh, population statistics. What they found is that uh, they uh, have published here in the abstract, um, dietary administration of frying oil um, prepared under the conditions of good commercial practice. Okay. And what did it do? It exaggerated colitis, right, which is an inflammatory bowel disease, which is the area of most interest with rheumatoid arthritis, um, the, the colon and also the small intestine. Uh, it also uh, increased the tumor genesis, meaning grow, grew tumors, okay? In addition, dietary administra administration of this oil, of this fried oil, impaired intestinal barrier function. And so the underlying mechanism of rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory arthritic autoimmune conditions are that we've got a translocation or we've got a movement of stuff that's meant to be in your intestines that's getting into the bloodstream that should be protected by your uh, gut wall all right this is called leaky gut and so we've got increased leaky gut and what does this do well it means we get more of this stuff called lipopolysaccharides into our bloodstream and lipopolysaccharides are a substance that are produced by bacteria and it's in the lining, the cell wall of the bacteria, and it gets released into your blood when the bacteria enter the blood, which, which is the next bullet point here, the bacteria from the gut get into systemic circulation. Okay, so this is the result of this increased leaky gut. So we've got more of the bacteria entering the bloodstream and more of these very, very pro-inflammatory lipopolysaccharides that come from the cell wall of the bacteria, which is why the next statement here is that we get increased tissue inflammation. Okay, so this is um, uh, really the exact definition um, of what we don't want. Okay, what we don't want is more leaky gut, more bacteria in our bloodstream, which end up in our joints, uh, which is shown in other studies where we've got in rheumatoid arthritis, the presence of bacteria, proteins uh, and um, uh, bacteria substances in our joints. And we do not want an increase of or an uptick in cytokines, which are the inflammatory um, markers, which results from these lipopolysaccharides. All right. So um, this is consistent with other studies um, Partly because what happens is that when the oils are heated, it dramatically increases 
the amount of free radical load that the oils create. Okay, so that's one of the things that it's going on. Um, and uh, just to pull upon further information here, so another study here um, called the effect of heated vegetable oils on blood pressure in rats. So it shows that the thermal oxidation, um, meaning that as we heat and therefore oxidize or create free radicals in the cooking oils, promotes the generation of free radicals and may play an important contributory role in the pathogenesis, pathogenesis or creation or um, uh, you know, development of hypertension, which is high blood pressure, in rats. Okay, so um, there's that, but there's also this, which is the uh, study called the evaluation of the deleterious health effects of consumption of repeatedly heated vegetable oils, which of course is done in restaurants on a daily basis. The, the fryers are used to do chips or wedges, uh, and, uh, you know, or even uh, in some instances, vegetables, if they're uh, deep fried, all sorts of stuff. And these things are reheated frequently. So in this study, it's uh, the, one of the abstract comments are results of the present study confirm that the thermal oxidation of cooking oil generates free radicals and dietary consumption of such oils results in detrimental health effects. This matters so much with rheumatoid from a free radical oxidative stress point of view uh, as I switch across to my last study that I'm drawing upon here, which is that oxidative stress and its relevance in the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. In the abstract, it says the fact that the oxidative stress is, is an active process in RA pathogenesis. So what does this mean? Oxidative stress is where we've got too many free radicals coming into the body than what the body can handle. So it's just any kind of stress is, is kind of defined by that. Too much that you can handle, whether it be you know, emotional stress, um, work stress, uh, digestive stress, and in this case, oxidative stress. So too much oxidation in the body. And um, the links between oxidative stress and rheumatoid arthritis are uh, extremely well established and I gave a presentation that included a big chunk on this um, at plant stock in North Carolina last month and I also gave a one hour uh, tutorial about this to members of Patterson program support uh, explaining the oxidative stress link and rheumatoid arthritis so what do you do if you've gone out and eaten fried food well even small amounts um, and even non-fried, just coconut oil that has not been fried yet, just oil that has not even been heated can be so det detrimental that a strategy is needed to recover from that. And I've got a video here on YouTube that you can go and watch called How to Recover from Eating the Wrong Foods and Stirring Up Inflammation, a case study where I walk through one of one of the members of uh, my support group and how Emma recovered from just eating some coconut oil that was in uh, some muffins that she didn't make. But when you're talking fried oils, you're at a whole order of magnitude more detrimental as we have seen uh, in this study that's just come out. So I hope this has been helpful. Stay away from the fried foods at all costs. You know, what if you're you're on a great set of drugs that are doing a good thing for you and you don't have any inflammation in the body? Does that mean you can eat fried food? Absolutely not. Because daily I get members who join my support group who have been on such drugs for so many years and then have experienced that the drug is no longer working or that it is not as effective or however you want to describe it. And I believe a lot of that uh, comes from complacency with diet uh, and exercise. Um, so not to get make this video 10 hours long, um, but the way that we can keep our free radical load as, uh, as low as possible is to have high level of, of antioxidants. Uh, one is through our antioxidant enzyme resources, which come through exercise. Okay, so that's how we build up our biggest defenses. And the other, of course, is through foods. And so, but if we go and drop, you know, fried food into the mix regularly, 
then no matter how good the technology and the sophistication of scientific development is around medication, you can't combat the sort of stuff that's on the screen right now. You can't combat um, against these uh, bacteria entering your blood, the lipopolysaccharides triggering inflammation. That's just what's going to happen. Okay, so stay away from the fried food no matter where you're at in your healing journey and what kind of medical treatment you're on. Uh, always just never eat fried food. Okay, so I hope you found this uh, presentation helpful. Please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you want a program that ensures that you don't consume anything bad, let alone this bad, uh, head over to pattersonprogram.com where you can find information about the Patterson Program and also about how to get private help if you'd like my coaching. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video.